How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time coming, but it is finally time for me to throw an update together for you guys. So let's roll that intro and get into it. So in the last Frankenstein video I put out, I was refinishing the wheel wells and I sprayed them with Raptor liner and uh, a lot has happened since then. I got a lot of updates for you guys, so let's get into this. So in a previous video, I mentioned to you guys that uh, we slowed down on content a little bit because there were some health problems in my family. So I'm going to be straight up with you guys. Uh, my wife had a pretty serious condition and uh, it got really bad to the point where she was hospitalized for uh, quite a long period of time. And uh, so I had to make a lot of trips to the hospital and uh, bringing her in for appointments and stuff like that. And uh, I also have a nine year old son at home. So I had to spend a lot of time looking after him on my own as well. So that ended up eating up a lot of my time. Uh, had to prioritize my family, obviously. So uh, that's kind of where a lot of my time went. But at the same time, I was losing a lot of sleep over it too. So I ended up spending a lot of late nights out in the garage. So I was getting a lot of work done, but I was in no mood or condition to be recording myself. So this is where we're at with Frankenstein. We've made a ton of progress. I've spent a lot of hours on it, but I haven't recorded much of it, but I think I'm to the point now where I'm ready to start recording again. Everything is starting to look up, everything's improving. So very thankful for that. 2022 was a very rough year for my family, but 2023 is shaping up to be a really good year. Everything's going good so far. So with that out of the way, let's get some updates going here. So first things first, I know what you guys are thinking. Matt, you live in Canada. It's minus 30 degrees Celsius outside. How are you painting? How are you doing body work? Well, let me show you. I finally pulled the trigger on getting a heater installed in here. So uh, the very first year we moved into this house, me and Tim insulated this garage and uh, we were using a propane heater occasionally when we were working out here, but it was not working too well. I wanted constant heat in here. This is the solution. So uh, this thing I have set to 20 degrees right now. I just turned it off so I could film, but uh, we're sitting at 18 degrees Celsius right now. It is nice and toasty in here. And if I come over to the coldest part of my garage, we're sitting at about 14, yeah, 14 ish degrees Celsius in here. So I'm trying to keep it above 10 degrees at all times. And, uh, this heater is doing the job. So, uh, we've had a couple days now where it's been minus 40 degrees out and uh, this thing's maintaining it no problem. So I got my ceiling fan going too. Uh, if I have the ceiling fan off, all the heat kind of just collects in this area. But uh, as long as I have the fan running, it circulates it very well in here. So super stoked about that. That is life changing because winter is flying by because I'm able to be productive out here. I've never really experienced heat in a garage before, so uh, it's very nice to be able to come out here and actually be comfortable and work. So as you can see behind me here, this is where my window is. Uh, double insulated that. I got some styrofoam from work. They were just throwing it in the garbage. So I'm like, that's perfect. So double layered that. So uh, we got some good insulation going in here. It's holding the heat very well. So like I said, guys, I'm trying to stay as productive as possible out here. But uh, something else I love to do is stay up to date on YouTube as well. Uh, there's a lot of channels that I like to support and watch. So something else I did uh, so that I can kind of be productive at the same time is I got a smart TV installed out in the garage. So now I can stay updated on YouTube videos and at the same time, I can still get some work done out here. Pretty stoked about that. It makes it a lot easier to work out here and uh, kind of passes the time pretty quick. So uh, really stoked about that. Got it on a good Black Friday deal, so couldn't turn it down and uh, it's been working great. Now let's get into where we're at with Frankenstein. First thing I want to show you guys, this is an update I don't think I've communicated yet, but I got some new seats. Now these came out of an RSX Type S, I believe. Uh, they're the nice leather seats. 
and uh, they came with EK rails mounted on the bottom already, so they actually fit very well in here. So I was worried at first that these were gonna sit too high, because if you guys remember back, uh, I had installed some EP3 seats in here, and they ended up being way too high, so when I wore a helmet, I'd be hitting my head on the, the headliner of the car. These ones must sit a little bit lower, because I test fit it with my helmet on, and I sit in here very comfortably. They are definitely higher than my Del Sol seats were, but they're very comfortable and I sit at a very comfortable height. So I actually feel a bit more solid in the driver's seat and I think for track use, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable. Now, let's get on to the engine bay here. So, last time you would have saw, I think I just got all the metal work done. So I got all the patches done, all the welding done. But basically what I ended up doing since the last video when I got the metal work done is I uh, tried to strip as much of the paint off as possible. So I used my eBay sandblaster to the best of my ability, stripped as much off as I could. That thing was so cheap actually, it ended up sandblasting a hole in itself. So I ended up having to buy some new parts, uh, install those parts on it so I could sandblast again. It lasted maybe about two hours and then it blasted another hole in itself. So I ended up putting that thing away and stripping the rest of the paint off by hand. If we come over to the toolbox here, this is mainly what I was using. I just got one of these attachments here for the end of the drill. Uh, it actually works a lot better on a, a die grinder. So I was using one of these air grinders which worked pretty well uh, with my bigger compressor now. Uh, I can actually run air tools like this and uh, I can use them continuously. So that ended up working pretty well. Uh, there were some areas that I couldn't quite get to with those discs, so I ended up having to sand by hand. I just used oh, any of my various sandpapers here. I think I got some 320 uh, for some of the really tough stuff. I was using some 80 grit and then we would have to buff out those scratches with the 320. So like this stuff worked pretty good, but that's like sanding with gravel basically. So that leaves a lot of scratches. So it's good for uh, cutting down the thick stuff, but uh, not good for detail sanding. But anyway, once all the old paint was stripped off, then I degreased everything, cleaned it off really well, ended up spraying it with a self-etching primer. It was all bare metal. So self-etching primer went on and then I did uh, some heavy coats of epoxy primer. So this is the primer that I've been using. This is the same stuff I used in the wheel wells, but it is uh, Omni MP871 is the part number on that. And then uh, we got the hardener and the reducer as well. So this stuff doubles as a filler primer as well as a sealer. So I've used it as a filler primer already. I laid it on pretty thick uh, so that I could block it out later. And then uh, once I'm finished all the body work and everything in the engine bay, I'm going to use it as a sealer. So that should work pretty good. Uh, as for the body fill, I started off by using this stuff. Uh, this is supposed to be similar to Evercoat, or uh, they were telling me it was Evercoat, but basically just put in a can like this and it's sold as a store brand. Um, I tried using it for one day and this stuff is so porous. Uh, you cannot get it smooth at all, especially if you're just doing like little detail uh, fills that you want to do. Like there was a few pinholes here and there I wanted to take care of. This would not take care of it. It would just smear over it and kind of clump up. So I wasn't too impressed with the quality of this stuff. Um, now this stuff, this is actually what we use at work uh, for if we have issues in the body when we're building RVs. And this stuff I know works very well, but it is very expensive. So I was a bit hesitant at first to get some of this stuff, but uh, finally I pulled the trigger because I know how to work with it. It's easy stuff to work with and it's very good quality stuff. So that was about 60 bucks for this can, but I feel like it's gonna last me a long time. So it'll be well worth it in the end. So yeah, as you can see, I have welded all the holes that are unused, ground them down, and body filled and shaped as much as I can in here. Um, I wanted to make the body fill as thin as possible. So um, there's not actually a whole lot of body filler on here. It's just the way that the body fill looks or the color that it is. It looks like it's laid on pretty thick, but uh, these layers aren't actually that thick. So I wanted to get this as smooth as possible. Same as up top here. Basically the areas that are gonna be most visible 
top of the strut tower and the rad support, all that stuff that's gonna be right in your face. That's kind of where I wanted to do the bulk of the work. This is where the wiring harnesses would have ran through, so they are deleted now. Uh, I had a few other holes cut in here. I don't know if the one down here is factory or not, but it was cut in there when I got the car. So all of that that's not being used anymore is covered. And then I also used uh, glazing and spot putty. This is the stuff that I've been using. It's a uh, Proform. It actually works really well. Uh, I put it on very thin. I'm basically just filling in all the pinholes and uh, some of the minor scratches and stuff that were left. So as you can see here, there's a few sanding scratches and stuff that I had to fill in. So all of that has been done. I am still planning on going over this again with a filler primer. And then when I do, that'll fill in any of the other imperfections that I missed. So I'm um, hoping to lay it on pretty thick again so I can block everything out and it's gonna turn out Pretty good, I think. Keep in mind, I am not a bodywork expert and I do not enjoy doing it at all, but uh, I'm trying to do the best I can with the knowledge I have and the tools I have. And uh, in the end, I think it's gonna end up looking pretty good. Um, the only thing that I'm facing now, these are the patches that I did where uh, there was some rust that I had to repair. So on both sides, I put a bunch of patches in there and uh, they're solid. The rust is gone, but the welds look terrible because I just used this Mastercraft welder here. It does not make the prettiest welds, but it does get the job done. So that's what I had used, but now I'm trying to figure out a way to make these actually look good. So I am super paranoid about any moisture getting in here. So when I did the wheel wells, I did seam seal everything from underneath. So even the patches and everything I did, they're all seam sealed from the backside but I do want to seam seal from this side as well. So any seams and any welds that I have in the inside here, I'm going to be seam sealing, but it's still going to look super ugly. Uh, so if I zoom in on this guy here, like I don't think I can do anything about that with body fill or seam seal. It's not going to make it look nice. So I had an idea a while back. It's gonna take me a lot of extra time, but I think it's gonna be worth it in the end. Basically, I'm going to seam seal all the seams that I have here, all the welds that I have here. Once that's dry, I'm gonna go over all of this with fiberglass. So anywhere that there's a weld, and then the weld sits higher than the metal, or in this case, the metal is sunk in pretty far, I wanna use fiberglass to try and level all that out because I'm trying to use as little body filler as possible because I really don't want this to crack after all of the time and money I've put into it. Uh, I think fiberglass might be the best way to go just uh, to level everything out and then I can do a thin coat of body fill over it just to get rid of all the other imperfections. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. That's basically the step that I'm at right now is I'm getting to the seam seal. So uh, I guess since I'm out here and uh, I basically got you guys all caught up, I think I'm going to get to work on that. Uh, I'll show a bit of the seam seal process and then uh, we'll wait for that to dry. Once it's dry, we're going to start fiberglass. And again, guys, I am no expert. This uh, is just something in my mind that I think is going to work out well. It might not be the right way. It might not be the best way, but I think it's going to work. Um, maybe I'm going overboard. Maybe I'm doing too much with uh, the seam seal and stuff like that. I know a lot of guys will just weld it up and then body fill over top of it or fiberglass over top of it, but I don't know. I'm just super paranoid that any little bit of moisture is going to get in there and then uh, the body filler is going to somehow absorb it and cause rust and corrosion, and I really, really don't want that. So I'm doing the best I possibly can to try and eliminate that. So this is the same stuff that I used in the wheel wells when I seam sealed them. So it's an automotive grade 3M gray seal. Uh, it's the part number there. Um, I got this stuff from work. It's the same stuff we use on RVs. It costs about 30 bucks for this little tube here. So um, I do have a little bit left over from when I did the wheel wells. Most of this is actually dried up, but I'm hoping I can at least squeeze a little bit out of here, uh, try and use as much as I can because uh, I really don't want to bust this one open yet because I have plans for it down the road and I don't want this one drying up. So I like to conserve as much as possible because uh, that stuff is pretty pricey. Um, but I was able to borrow the applicator gun from work. So I got to return this. 
on Monday. It's Saturday now, so I gotta get this done so I can return it. So I'm gonna try loosening this off. This is pretty dried on already. So we're dried on at the bottom and dried on at the top, but we're still kind of soft in the middle. So I'm hoping we can salvage this, uh, get it in the applicator gun and at least get a couple beads of this in the engine bay. Maybe I'll even be able to squeeze enough out of it to finish today, but we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so this is the big dried up chunk that I pulled out of the tube here. And all this stuff in here is still wet stuff, so I should be able to use that. Uh, whatever was inside here that was wet, I scooped out as best I could and uh, kind of just shoved it inside the tip here. So try to conserve as much as I can. Hopefully I can at least use some of this and then uh, we'll see how far we get. So I'm gonna put it in the gun. We're gonna get started on this and uh, hopefully we can get finished here. All right guys, so now that I got a decent bead of seam sealer covering all the welds and the seams, I'm gonna go over it and just kind of smooth it out with my finger just so that it's not so globby. And then uh, it doesn't really have to look super pretty because the fiberglass is gonna cover it all anyway. But uh, at least we got all the seams covered here. All right guys, well, here's where we're at. Like I said, it's not gonna look super pretty. I didn't do a whole lot of prep work. So when I do the rest of the seam seal in the engine bay, I'm gonna tape off everything and then I'm gonna smooth it out really nice with soap water. But for this purpose, this is gonna seal just fine and it's all getting covered anyway. So I didn't wanna waste any extra time on uh, making it look nice. Uh, same with this side, this is how we're looking. So all the seams are covered, all the welds are covered. So we will be 100% sealed and then no moisture is gonna to get to the fiberglass or any of the metal inside the engine bay. So I'm giving it the best possible chance to stay rust free. So that's kind of where I'm going to leave it tonight. Uh, I'm going to let this stuff dry and then by tomorrow we'll pick it up again and uh, get started on fiberglass. So we got a whole day ahead of us tomorrow, so should be able to get a lot done. So we'll see you then. All right, guys, so we are picking up where we left off yesterday. Uh, so I got my fiberglass laid out here. I started cutting some strips and I got my resin here. Got some disposable paint brushes, so these are gonna be a single use. Uh, as soon as they're full of resin, just throw them out. Got a bunch of containers here for mixing the resin and uh, got the heat going, so we should get it nice and toasty in here uh, so the stuff can cure properly. Basically where I'm gonna start today is kind of in this area here. I'm trying to get all the low spots uh, level with the high spots, so. Uh, some of the lowest spots we have here. This is where the battery tray would have been mounted originally. So I wanna get in here, uh, get this built up so that it's kind of level all along here. Also, these are sunk in pretty far, these patches that I did. So I wanna build these up so that they are level with this piece here. And then also this is a bit lower than this is. So I wanna build up all the low spots first before I uh, cover the whole thing. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same on this side as well. So you can see in here, this is a very low spot. I wanna try and build this up so that it's nice and level across here. And uh, same story goes up here. This is a lower piece than this. So we'll build this up just to get it all level. So I'm just gonna get started little by little. I'm gonna start off with some of the strips that I have pre-cut already. So these strips are what's gonna be filling in uh, some of the low gaps. Uh, so I'm just gonna start off small with these and then uh, we're just gonna do it in small batches until I can get it built up to where I want it. And uh, we're gonna see how big a mess we can make today.
All right, guys, so I spent a pretty good chunk of time on this today, and uh, I think I finally got the driver's side to the point where uh, I can sand it and uh, then body fill over it. So um, I did a ton of layers on this, uh, starting off in the lowest spots. So basically in this area here where there was a really deep seam, I started off there, I added some layers into that, and basically all the low spots I tried to build up as best I could to get everything level for the most part and then once i had it level then i cut some bigger pieces of fiberglass mat and laid it over it just to kind of seal everything off so um, it actually looks pretty smooth as it is right now so uh, i'm actually really happy with uh, the way it turned out uh, it wasn't curing as fast as it should it's still kind of cold in here so i have the heater set to 15 degrees so it's sitting about 12 degrees celsius in here the resin needs about 24 degrees celsius to cure properly so it's supposed to take about two hours to cure so i got the heat lamp going uh one for light and two so it'll cure a bit faster so uh, i'm gonna leave that on it for a little bit yet uh, just to add some extra heat to it to allow it to cure properly. So the driver's side took a lot longer than anticipated to get finished, which means I didn't have a chance to get to the passenger side yet. So the plan is uh, this week, I'm just going to continue to work on this part of it. If I can get this all fiberglass by the end of the week, then by the weekend, I should be able to start sanding and getting everything nice and smooth. So I think I'm going to stop the video there, guys. It's already been a pretty long one because they did all the talking in the beginning. But uh, we made a lot of progress so far, still a lot of work to do. Um, I do still have the engine sitting here as well. It's protected under a garbage bag and uh, I really want to start digging into that thing. But uh, I won't be able to do too much engine work until I get the engine bay finished. So I really want to prioritize the engine bay, get that done first, and then uh, we can start tearing into the engine again. I think I have mostly all the parts I need to get everything together and get it running. I'd actually like to do an update for you guys because I got a ton of parts come in and uh, I haven't really covered it with you guys yet. So maybe if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. I will uh, put together a video of all the parts that I have waiting to go in. Because I'm so busy right now, uh, it has been tough for me to do uh, full length videos for you guys and editing and all that stuff. So uh, we might be doing a lot more with YouTube Shorts. Uh, just to keep you guys updated on things. That way we don't have to put together such a long video and a long update for you. Uh, we can just continue to update you guys with shorts during the week. So we might try to stick to a schedule where we're putting out two or three shorts a week uh, just to kind of keep you guys updated and uh, just for something to do so that there's still new content coming on the channel. So uh, let us know in the comments below if that's something you would like to see. Um, shorts is something that we haven't really uh, done too much of. I know we put a few up uh, but uh, it's something we'd really like to get into. Uh, so yeah, let us know what you think about that. Uh, if you like this video, guys, definitely give me a thumbs up and drop a comment below too, guys. We love to hear feedback from you. Uh, let us know what you'd like to see on the channel, uh, kind of what you think of the build so far, and if you have any suggestions for me. Like I said, I'm not a professional bodywork expert by any means, but uh, I'm just trying to get by with the knowledge and tools I have. But yeah, that's enough talking for this video. We'll see you in the next one.